I started off my journey to Asia after being locked down in Canada for over two years during the pandemic. I looked out my window of the WestJet flight to Toronto after being stuck on the runway for over an hour in Winnipeg because a service truck had broken down behind the plane at the gate. Just my luck. However, if I made it to Pearson Airport in Toronto in time, then I'd be able to make my connecting Cathay Pacific flight to Hong Kong, and then eventually onto the first stop of my trip, Bangkok, Thailand. After the two and a half hour flight, the plane eventually touched down in Toronto. It seemed like I'd be able to transfer and make my connection with some time to spare. At that moment, I was relieved that everything was going to plan. I thought that I'd have a comfortable two hours to easily make the transfer to catch my connecting flight to Hong Kong. Unfortunately, my hopeful sense of optimism was squandered when I disembarked the plane, passed through the arrival gate, and entered Pearson Airport. So, I'm stuck in Pearson Airport. It's, it's 3 a.m. I caught a flight out of Winnipeg earlier in the day, but uh, I made it here from that from that flight. Even though that flight was delayed an hour, it didn't matter because uh, when I got to Pearson Airport, I saw on the board that the Hong Kong flight had been delayed due to weather. I guess there's a massive storm going on in the area, so they canceled the flight. They didn't want the pilots didn't want to fly through that kind of weather. So anyway, I'm stuck here for another 24 hours. Uh, I tried to I tried to call Cafe Pacific to rearrange the flight times, but um, they were unable to get a get a book me on a flight earlier. So uh, yeah, it's pretty dead here. No one's no one's around the airport. So you can see. Anyway, wish me luck. I'm gonna be like Tom Hanks in Terminal for the next 24 hours. Where do I buy the Nike shoes? Figuring I had plenty of time to kill, I wandered around the airport to see if there was any life to be found. But all I could find were people's cast off garbage left abandoned on the seats. Food containers, plastic bottles, Tim Hortons wrappers. And potentially some kind of pot infused beverage, perhaps. Nice to see that people are making good use of the recycling cans in this section. Eventually, I found an ATM where I could deposit the last lingering $50 bill in my wallet. I sold my old Michael Jordan jersey for 50 bucks to some guy on Kijiji. That's gotta be a 50 bot. He took off just a little inside that free throw line, one hand and double clutch, and Magic Johnson gives him a nice five. All of the duty-free shops were closed. Strolling through this area of the airport was a bit like being trapped in a deserted shopping mall after hours with a few stranded souls wandering around. Everyone here must be wondering why on earth they decided to fly through Toronto to get to their final destination on the planet. Why did they leave the lights on in these stores? Was it their perverse strategy of tormenting customers? You can look at it, but you can't touch it. You can want it, but you can't have it. These store managers must be proud sadists. Or they just forgot to turn the lights off. The only place open during my stopover in Purgatory was Tim Hortons. For those of you watching who aren't Canadian, 
Tim Hortons is a coffee shop that sells donuts, sandwiches, soup, beverages, and other edibles. Back in 2014, Burger King purchased Tim Hortons and both became subsidiaries of a company called Restaurant Brands International, which also acquired Popeye's Chicken in 2017. Meanwhile, in the same year, the company expanded into Latin America with its first franchise in Mexico. Who are you? The Free Amigos! After checking the flight board, I was surprised to see some familiar Korean outlets in the duty-free area. I was looking forward to my trip to Korea to visit some friends after spending a few days in Thailand. If, heaven forbid, I didn't have any more slip-ups along the way. It's a long road ahead, along the conveyor belt of life. Sometimes we hit roadblocks. Nevertheless, it's up to us to find the inner strength and wherewithal to get back on the belt and proceed towards the end to discover wherever it takes us. We're going to be out in five minutes, Father. Yeah. In this case, it took me to a collection of unoccupied digital screens where I could order drinks and food. But since there were no restaurants open at that hour, the array of black mirrors surrounding me were rendered completely useless. This conundrum made me contemplate the meaning of the conveyor belt even more. Since I may need help unpacking this symbolic complexity, how about leaving a comment below and sharing your opinion? Even though I was unable to order anything from the touchscreen devices, this vending machine allows humans to purchase products without restrictions since there are no human employees required to complete the transactions. Good afternoon, Mr. Amer. Everything is going extremely well. Let me put it this way, Mr. Amer. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information, so I am constantly occupied. I am putting myself to the fullest possible use, which is all I think that any conscious entity can ever hope to do. At the end of my terminal expedition, and dealing with the random thoughts in my head while sauntering through the vacant airport, I found the way back to my original seating area. Thankfully, it looked like the cleaners had picked up everyone's trash, which made me regain some hope for humanity. This row of seats was going to be my bed for the remainder of the night. I tried to get some sleep as the recorded mask wearing reminders emanated from the speakers continuously on loop every five minutes throughout the night. The announcements were in both English and French. After all that we had been through over the past few years, it was a consistent reminder that it was more important to keep our safety a priority at the expense of our sanity. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe to see what happens next along my journey to Asia.